Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn some math. Today is our lesson number 27. Today we will discuss what are known as divisibility rules 6 through 10. How do we find out? How do we know by looking at a number by, by simple visual inspection that that number is going to be evenly divisible by 6? Well, let's talk about it, shall we? A number, a number is, is divisible by 6 if if what? What is the rule? Well, actually, it turns out it is actually a two-part uh, rule. It is two-part rule because the way we figure out if a number is divisible by 6 is by determining that it is in fact divisible by 2 and 3. If there is a number that is divisible by both 2 and 3, when 2 times 3 is 6, then that number must be divisible by 6 as well. How do we know if a number is divisible by 2? Well, if it's an even number. A number is divisible by 6 if it is an even number, that's number 1, and, and if it is divisible by 3. And how do we figure out if it's divisible by 3? How, it, how do we determine if it's divisible, if a, num, if a given number is divisible by 3? We learned that a couple of days ago. A number is divisible by 3 if, if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. So that's the first thing. But before we even worry about looking at the sum of the digits, make sure that it is an even number. Because if it's not an even number, it may be divisible by 3, but does not, does that not necessarily mean that it's going to be divisible by 6 if it happens to be an odd number. For example, for example, let's take a look at this number here. 300, 387. As we can clearly see, as we can clearly see, it's an odd number. It's not going to be divisible by 6, despite the fact that it is, in fact, divisible by 3. Because as we can see, 3 is divisible by 3 and 8 plus 7 is 15. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 is divisible by 3. So we could divide it by 3 very easily, but we can't divide it by 6. If we were to divide it by 6, it won't come out. It won't come out to be an even number. It would not, it would not come out to be an integer. It, it, we could divide it by 3. 3 is very easy. How many 3's does 3 have? 3 has 1 3. How many 3's does 8 have? 8 has 2 3's. The remaining 2 goes and joins to 7 becomes 27. And 27 has 9 3. There you go. But if we try to divide it by 6, it will not work. We'll see. It will not work. It is not divisible by 6 because it's not an even number. It's not divisible by 2. It is divisible by 3 but it's not divisible by 2. So it won't divide evenly into 6. How many 3, how many 6's, how many 6's does 3 have? 3 has no 6's. The 3 goes and joins the 8, becomes 38. How many 6, how many 6 does 38 have? 38 has 6 6's. 6 6 are 36. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 7, becomes 27. As you can see, 27 is not divisible by 6. 27 has 4 6's. 4 6 are 24, and we'll have a remainder of 3, which is to be divided by 6. So if you were to divide 387 by 6, the answer is going to be the answer is going to be 64 and a half. The 3 6 is going to become half. It's not even divisible by 3. Let's look at one example. Let's look at another example where we'll see the number is divisible by 6. For example, for example, if we have something like 3096. Well, 3096 is a very straightforward, simple scenario. It's a simple scenario because we can clearly see. We can clearly see the number is in fact an even number. Number is in fact an even number. It is divisible by two, and we can clearly see that it is also divisible by three because each of the individual digits are divisible by three. That would divide nicely into six. The previous number was not divisible by six. Let's look at one more. Let's take a look at one more. How about how about twenty-one thousand and twelve? Twenty-one thousand twelve. It's an even number. That means it's divisible by two. 2 plus 1 is 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3, which means sum of 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 is divisible by 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 is divisible by 3, which means the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, so this number is divisible by 3, and it's also an even number, which means it should be divisible by 6, it should be divisible by 6, let's do it out, shall we? 
How many sixes does 2 have? 2 has no sixes. That 2 is going to go and join the 1 becomes 21. 21 has 3 sixes. The remaining 3 is going to go and join the 3 becomes 30. 30 has 30 has 5 sixes. There you go. 30 has 5 sixes. How many sixes does 1 have? 1 has no six. The 1 goes and joins the 12. 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes 12 and 12 has 2 sixes. So the answer is 3500. Now instead of 21,012, if we had 21,000, 21,021, nothing would have changed. Nothing would have changed. The same exact story would have followed. 21, 21 has three sixes. 21 has three sixes, and many three goes and joins the zero becomes 30. 30 has five sixes. How many sixes does two have? Two has two has no sixes. Now we got a problem here. Ah, we got a problem. Sorry, this was not a good movie. I wasn't thinking. This is no longer divisible by 3 because it ends in a 1. It's an odd number. It's an odd number. This number is no longer divisible by 6. That one was because it's an even number. If it's an even number, delta tells, tells us that it's divisible by 2. And some of the digits is divisible by 3, which means it also should be divisible by 6, which we just saw it is. This one is not. How many 6s does 2 have? 2 has, two has no 6s. That 2 is going to go and join the 1, become 21. How many 6s does 21 have? 21 has... 3 sixes. 3 sixes with the remainder of 3, which is to be divided by 6. The answer is going to be, the answer is going to be 3,503 Let's move on to the next one. How do we know if a number is divisible by 7? How do we know if a number is divisible by 7? Well, I have some bad news for you. The bad news is that, the bad news is that there is, there is no rule. For seven, there is no rule for seven. You simply have to do it out and determine whether or not a number is divisible by seven. For example, the one one number that a lot of the time people miss when they're looking for prime numbers, they come across ninety-one. Many a times I have seen people miss ninety-one because in their haste they think that ninety-one actually is a prime number. It's not a prime number. When you have a number, you have to figure out whether or not, and if you're trying to figure out whether or not it's a prime number, but we learned before on day number 20, on day number 20, when we talked about the prime number, what we learned is that the way we figure out whether a given number is prime or not is to start dividing that number by all the previous prime number, all the previous prime number that occurred before 91, starting with 2. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, so on and so forth. Well, obviously it's not going to be divisible by 2 because it's an odd number. Let's try 3. Is, is 91 divisible by 3? The answer, of course, is no. 9 plus 1 is 10, and 10 is not divisible by 3. It's clearly not divisible by 5 because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. Is it divisible by 7? Well, that's what we have to figure out. There is no rule for it. We'll have to simply have to do it out. Let's do it out and find out, shall we? How many 7s in a 9? Nine? 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes 21. And 21, turns out, has exactly 3 7s with exactly three seven. In other words, it turns out that 91 is not a prime number. 91 is what is known as 91 is what is known as a composite number. It is the it is the product of two prime numbers. But it is not a prime number. But the only way we could figure out whether or not 91 is divisible by 7 is to actually do it out. There is no rule for it. Let's move on then to 8. A number a number is divisible by 8 if if its last three digits are divisible by 8. This rule is very similar to the rule that we learned for 4. What we learned when we're talking about 4, what we learn is that a number is divisible by 4, a number is divisible by 4 if its last if its last two digits are divisible by four. Now when we're dealing with eight, we have to look at when we're dealing with eight, we, we have to look at not the last two digits, but the last three digits. A number is divisible by eight if its last three digits are divisible by eight. For example, for example, uh, if we have something like this, three thousand 37,512. Now that number, 
that number, the only way we can figure out if this number is divisible by 8, we don't have to worry about 7000. Why is it that we don't, why is, why, why is it that we don't have to worry about 7000? Well, the reason is very straightforward. The reason why we don't have to worry about the 7 here, the 1000 digit, the reason we don't have to worry about the 1000 is because, is because we know that 1000 is in fact evenly divisible by 8. 1000 is the only divisible by 8. How many, how many 8 does 10 have? 10 has, 10 has 2 8's. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 0 becomes 20. How many 8 does 20 have? 20 has 2 8's. 2 8's are 16. 2 8's are 16. The remaining 4 goes and joins the 0 becomes 40. How many 8 does 40 have? 40 has 5 8's. Turns out that something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong drastically. 10 does, 10 does not have 2 8's. 10 has 1 8. 10 has 1 8, which makes perfect sense because 100 times 8, 100 times 8 is 800, and if you have 25, if you have 825, 825s are going to be another 200, that's 1000. But as you can clearly see, that 1000 is divisible by 8. If 1000 is divisible by 8, then so is 2000, so is 3000, so is 7000. If 1000 is divisible by 8, then any multiple of 1000 is going to be divisible by 8, and this 3 that you see there is actually 30,000. Anything after the thousand digits, we don't have to worry about it. It's just the last three digits we have to worry about whether or not those three digits are divisible by eight. And the answer is yes. Then the number itself is divisible by eight. So here, only thing that we need to check here, we don't have to waste our time checking anything else. Just 512. Just 512 divided by eight. How many eight does five have? Five has no eight. The so five is going to go and join one, become 51. How many eight does 51 have? Well, we know 8, 6 are 48. 8, 6 are 48. That leaves you a remainder of 3. That leaves us a remainder of 3. The 3 is going to go join 2 and become 32. And 32 has 4 8's. Now since 512, it turns out, is evenly divisible by 8, therefore 37, 512 is divisible by 8. And so is, so, and so is uh, 537,000 and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter what you put after that, it makes no difference, everything is divisible by 8. You can keep adding that all of these numbers are divisible by 8 because the last three digits are divisible by 8. Do you understand? Let's move on then, let's talk about 9. A number is divisible by 9, a number is divisible by 9 if, if the sum of its digits is is divisible by 9. So the rule in that sense for 9 is exactly same as the rule that we had for 3. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. We learned that before a couple of days ago. A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3 a number is going to be divisible by 9 if we can determine that the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. For example, let's start with something very simple, simple example, simplest example. For example, we all know that 18 is divisible by 9. 18 is divisible by 9 because some of the digits here is 1 plus 8 and 1 plus 8 is 9 and 9 is divisible by 9. Let's look at one more example. How about, how about 963? 963 is going to be divisible by 9 because 9 itself is divisible by 9 and here we have some of these two digits is 6 plus 3 which is 9 so that's going to be divisible by 9 and if you have to do it out it only takes a second 9 has one, one 9, 6 has no 9, 6 goes and joins the 3 becomes 63 and 63 is going to have 7 nines as you can see. Let's do one more. How about, how about 3012? Is 3012 divisible by 9? Well, we can tell that it's divisible by 3, because 3 is divisible by 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 is divisible, that, those two digits are going to be divisible by 3, but it's not going to be divisible by 9, because this is 3, this is 3, we get some of the digits here, the sum of the digits, the sum of the digits is 6, and 6 is not divisible by 9, so 3,012, 3, it turns out, is not divisible by 9, it is divisible by 3, but it is not divisible by 9. How about, how about, instead of 3,000, how about instead of 3012, how about instead of 3012, we stick one more digit here. There we go. 
Now it turns out the sum of the, sum of the digit is 9. Since the sum of the digits is 9 and we know that 9 is divisible by 9, therefore, therefore 30,123 30, should be divisible by 9. It's a very straightforward process. How many 9 does 3 have? 3 has no 9s. The 3 is going to go and join the 0 becomes 30. How many 9s does 30 have? 30 has 3 9s. 3 9s are 27. 3 9s are 27. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 31. This is where you have to slow down. It's just a matter of concentration. This method that we are doing here is no difference, is no different than the long division. This method is very similar, not very similar. It is exactly the same method as the long division. The only difference is that the work that is being done is not done manually on a piece of paper. It's being done in your head. You have to keep track of everything in your mind. But the process is very similar. For, I'm going to do it out actually, just to show you here. 30,000. 123 divided by 9, exact same process. Let's start again from scratch. 30,000, 30,000, divided by 9. How many, how many threes, how many 9 does 3 have? 3 has no 9. So we're going to join that 3 with a 0, it becomes 30. And 30 is going to have 3 9s. 3 9s are 27. 3 9s are 27. Okay? 3 has no 9's, 3 goes and joins the 0, becomes 30, 30 has 3 9's, 3 9's are 27, the remaining 3 goes and joins the 1, becomes 21, the remaining 3 goes and joins the 1, joins the 1, and becomes 31, the remaining 3 goes and joins the 1, becomes 31, how many 9's does 31 have? 31 again has 3 9's, 3 9's are 27, 3 9's are 27. That's going to give us a remainder of 4. The 4 is going to go and join the 2 becomes 42. How many 9's does 42 have? 42 has 9 4's are 36. 9 4's nine, nine are 36. We had 42. 42 minus 36 is 6. That 6 is going to go join the 3 and become 63 and 63 has 7 9. Let's see what we get here. So we became 31. 31 is going to have 3 9's, 27. We have a remainder of 4. The 4 goes and joins the 2. 42 has how many 9's? 42 has 4 9's. 4 9's are 36. That gives us a remainder of 6. That 6 goes and joins the 3 and becomes 63 and 63 has 63 has 7 9's. 63 has 7 9's. There you go, exact same process. The long division is exactly what we are doing, except we are doing it in our head. Well, anyway, the bottom line is that a number is divisible by 9 as long as you can determine that the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. Let's move on then. How do we know if a number is divisible by 10? It's very simple. A number is divisible by 10 if it ends in a zero. If the last digit is zero, if the last digit is zero, then it's divisible by nine, obviously, because it's a multiple of ten. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.